In this video tutorial, we'll show you how to properly use the RTX 1250 I2 saw. Anyone planning to dig, excavate, or otherwise move earth deeper than 16 inches is required by Texas law to call 811 before beginning a project to have underground utilities marked. Rocky Hill Equipment recommends calling 811 prior to any project that involves digging with our equipment regardless of depth. To begin, this is a demonstration of a properly operated RTX 1250 I2 saw. This machine is designed to always drive forward while cutting and never backward. The backfill blade is at the front of the machine and the circular cutting blade is at the rear. On the circular blade, there are different components that serve their own purpose. You have segments, segment bolts, pockets, and rock bits. Rock bits are what contact the rock material, break it into smaller pieces, thus making your trench. Let's go through operator control layout. Taking a seat on the RTX 1250 I2, all controls are going to be to the operator's right hand side. The screen displays battery voltage, hydraulic gauge, fuel and depth gauges, and an RPM gauge. Once you activate the wheel saw in the back, a second screen will appear and display circular saw and creeper speed gauges. At the bottom of the screen, you'll notice the letter N, indicating that all controls are in neutral. We have the handle that controls a few different controls on the machine itself. This handle controls the backfill blade in the front, allowing it to move up, down, left to right. And by using the switch located in the back of the handle, you can change the angle of the backfill blade. Just below that switch, you have the grade control for the front blade. At the top of the handle, you have three buttons controlling the rear steering. This option is to be used while transporting or maneuvering around objects, not while trenching. Next, we have the orange switch that allows the operator to control the RPMs. When adjusting RPMs, you'll see the RPM gauge on your screen change. Next, we have the HL button. When transporting high gear makes it easier and quicker. While trenching the machine needs to be in the low gear, there is an indicator at the top left of the screen showing what gear you are currently on. Underneath the backfill blade handle, there are three switches and only one is highlighted in green. This switch is what drops and lifts the rear wheel saw. To the right of the switches, starting at the bottom, we have the controls that activate the wheel saw in the rear. To activate, you press the button to the left highlighted in yellow. Then look to the right of your screen and the letter F should appear. At this point, we are going to turn the knob clockwise to get the wheel in the rear spinning. While you turn the knob, the wheel speed gauge will change simultaneously. Before you drop the wheel to the ground, assure the speed is set at 100%. To seize the wheel, first turn the knob counterclockwise slowly till you hit 0%. At this point, press the knob to finalize the shutdown of the wheel. Moving on to the creeper controls. First, you press the button to the left highlighted in orange. You see an F appear on the left side of the screen next to the creeper speed gauge. Next, you need to turn the knob clockwise and you will feel the machine advance forward. Once the machine is moving, there is an auto option that allows the machine to keep both the speed of the creeper and the wheel in the rear in a safe zone. Finally, down at the bottom by your feet, we have the foot pedals that move the machine forward and reverse. These are to be used while adjusting or transporting the machine, not while trenching. Operating procedure. Inspect the rock bits on the cutting blade to make sure there are no broken, missing, or loose bits on the blade segments. We always recommend checking your rock bits before, during, and after every use. Look to make sure all my handles, controls, are in neutral and start the machine. 
we will now adjust the rock saw to begin cutting our trench. Once adjusted, throttle up your RPMs to the max. Press the wheel activation button and verify F appeared on the right side of your screen. Turn the knob clockwise until you've reached 100%. Slowly drop your wheel in the rear. Once you started trenching, only drop the wheel a few inches at a time till the depth required. Once the depth required is met, press the creeper activation button and verify the F appears on the left side of the screen. Turn the knob clockwise slowly and advance forward at 1%. Press the auto button. At this point, adjust the speed to stay in the safe zone. While using this machine, we suggest picking up the saw wheel every five feet for the first 20 feet and have a spotter get good visual on the rock pits, pockets, and segments. After your first 20 feet, you can pick up the saw blade every 10 or 15 feet depending on how comfortable you feel with the material you are cutting through. The purpose of this is to prevent major damages from occurring. When too many rock bits go missing, you start to damage or break pockets. When finished digging, again, put the creeper in neutral. Lift the blade. Slow the throttle and put the cutting blade into neutral. Engage the parking brake and turn off the machine. When you are finished installing your components into your trench, the RTX 1250 I2 saw. Also backfill the material to complete the job. This is done with the backfill blade at the front of the machine and use the foot pedal to advance the machine to the desired location. Position the blade close to final grade level and at a 45 degree angle facing the blade to the trench. This will force the tailings back into the trench as you creep forward. This machine is not to bulldozer. Only push as much of the tailings as you safely can and as many passes as it takes to fill your trench. Let's talk about safety. Always wear the safety seat belt as being thrown from the machine in the event of an accident could cause more severe injury than being locked in place under the roll cage. Be aware of the terrain obstacles, overhead hazards, and other workers near your trenching path. Do not lose focus as trenching can be slow and monotonous, but accidents can happen at any time. Always learn as much as you can about the equipment you've rented and its proper operation to complete your job. If you'll be renting equipment for multiple days, please remove the keys from the equipment and store in a safe location on your job site. Please return the equipment in the condition it was rented to you, clean and full of fuel. If you have any concerns or issues with the equipment, please give us a call at 210-651-5611 and let us solve those issues for you. Because at Rocky Hill Equipment Rental, we are committed to service.